Welcome back to Realism Overhaul! Research and development towards moon landing technology is nearing completion, but is still several years away from being flight ready. As I wait, I decide to complete, well, to attempt, at least, two different X-plane contracts. One being to fly an X-plane above 75 kilometers, and the other being to hold a specific supersonic speed at a specific altitude. Although the construction time of the X-Plane vehicle and its carrier, the K-52, took more time to build than the contract allowed, causing this technical failure, I decided to push the concept further anyways. That way, any future X-Plane contract should be able to be successful without a doubt. As an aside, I'm curious for your feedback. Which types of realism overhaul videos do you prefer? sped up summarized videos like this one, or full length playthroughs with live commentary? Let me know in the comments! Testing the KX-1 off the runway proved to be a bit tedious. Uh, the small landing gear in KSP version 1.2.2 causes rapid deconstruction of any vehicle connected to it, basically, uh, which was a bit of a pain. But an easy solution to remedy the Kraken was to splash down, as much as the crew hated it. Constructing the K-52 is relatively easy to do, since its propeller engines pull the aircraft rather than push, its aerodynamics are very forgiving. The aircraft is being designed to carry the KX-1 through an altitude of 10 kilometers before letting it go, giving the KX-1 much more room to fly than off the ground, and much safer considering the landing gear situation as well. Uh, four prop engines and a very wide wingspan should easily do the trick.
Of course, making sure the front gear is in front of the center of mass is recommended. Unfortunately, there was a few things I did not account for during construction, and, well, I accidentally discovered them both during flight. One, flying the K-52 at the speed of sound at low altitude causes its wings to break apart. Luckily, its winglets now were still symmetrical enough to fly back and land, but knowing the velocity threshold of the aircraft now is good to know for sure. Number two, well, with the KX-1 attached, the K-52 was too heavy to lift off. Simply put, it no longer had enough thrust to weight ratio to get off the runway, causing a bit of a close call. But simply adding two more engines for a total of six prop engines brought the thrust to weight ratio back up to around 0.49, which worked perfectly for its purpose. The KX-1's second flight reached a top speed of 2,022 meters per second, at an altitude just over 32,000 kilometers. Believe it or not, this beat the Americans' X-15's top speed by 2 meters per second, a win for us! KX-1's third and final flight, I decided to shoot for the stars. Originally, I had planned to reach just past the Kármán line, 100 kilometers, as the X-15 had done. But to again one-up the Americans, I decided to go for much higher. The KX-1 reached a top altitude of 179 kilometers, officially leaving the Earth's atmosphere, and then some. This also beat the X-15's record altitude by 72 kilometers, another win for us. The only real problem being the lack of reaction control thrusters. This meant re-entering the atmosphere was basically dead weight. Re-entering the atmosphere, I had absolutely no control until we hit thicker parts of the atmosphere, but until then, it was left in this deadly spin, which I'm sure the pilot did not enjoy one bit. The 
Maniacs 1 splashed down successfully for the third and final time, its pilot now a decorated hero in the eyes of our space program. A water plane is sent to retrieve our pilot, and the X-plane mission is left a resounding success, despite not yet completing any contracts whatsoever. The time is ticking for us to beat the Americans to the moon. Until then, we will be continuing research and flight tests until we're ready. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.